Yeah, just what they're preparing. Uh, in keeping with our policy moving forward, we had done this with the Novak report and Honeywell, and I think um, the consensus is when we have more important matters that are a little more weighty, to give uh, staff and our consultants a little more opportunity to make a presentation, then have more ample opportunity to answer questions from the council. Um, because when we do it in the regular meeting, then we have other people waiting, it throws off, and sometimes it goes much later into the evening, people are a little more tired. So I think this is working out well to do it between six and seven. And I will say that we'll try to, a lot of people know we have the regular meeting at seven, but I had an opportunity to talk to our friend, uh, Jack Sheridan today, who was unaware of us to seven. I'm gonna do a little better job promoting, and that's why I'm stating it, that people are waiting for the seven o'clock meeting and are unaware that at the six to seven, um, they probably haven't seen the agenda that was posted over the weekend. So we'll try to do a better job of getting that out there to the public and putting it on our um, town manager site sure. so people understand that when we have these meetings six to seven, they'll be here and televised, uh, and maybe we'll get one to attend or watch from home. So we'll, do a, we'll, we'll work on that, too. And, and just on that, Chris, to, to Jack, so this is sort of your, you've been asking this question for about a year, asking for the report of the Honeywell you know, project that the voters appro approved two years ago. So this is, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but this is sort of the report on how we, how we did. Yeah, I don't know if it's the right. final report, it's but- the first year. Right. First so, year report. First year. Greg will give an overview yep. for the folks at home to say what it was, kind of a little bit of the scope of the project, and then they had said, uh, wait about a year so we can actually see. Uh, the proof will be in the numbers, and this is that first year report. And I've asked also, could you give us a sense as to, can we expect these type of savings in the future? Will it fluctuate? And uh, then we can give updates as we go forward as well. Craig. So just uh, name and title for the town, and then if you know, for name when you were, I think for Honeywell or whatever company you work for, for the voters, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Greg Gabinell, Deputy Director, DPW. Thank you for having us. I'm Kai Hald. I work with Peregrine Energy Group. Kai and Peregrine have been uh, our town consultants on the project since the beginning. So tonight is the uh, opportunity for us to give you uh, at least an initial uh, review of the project and how we are doing so far, as we just discussed. Um, we have preliminary verification, and so now is finally the time when we can give you some numbers. But before we do so, let's we'll start with a project overview. <coughs> we'll give you highlights and benefits of the Greg, project. Greg, apologize. Second, Any chance we can get the boys in ETV to help us? It's the signal's we not going a, in. We got a week or uh -oh. we're gonna try another input. Go. Oh. Sorry, folks, though, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, somebody moved the TV last week. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because that is component, correct? No, VGA. Uh, VGA or RGB. RGB. Bring it down one. There we yeah, go. Somebody moved the TV last week and it's the neighbors. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sorry, sir. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, project overview, highlights and benefits. We'll go through some of the financials. Uh, results to date and what comes next. Project timeline. July 2014, the town selected Honeywell as energy savings performance contract vendor through a competitive bid process. And there were uh, three or four other bidders in that process. First step, August to November 2014, Honeywell completed a preliminary energy audit um, where the town was given some options to consider for, we'll say, biggest bang for the buck. January to July 2015, uh, Honeywell completed the what's called the investment grade audit, um, which was the, the formal uh, audit where we selected uh, final uh, work scope and uh, received the energy savings financial commitment. Uh, December 2016, town passed the referendum on second try, construction uh, contract signed, and then construction work 
took place April 2017 through March 2018. April 2018, final project was acceptance, accepted, and then the first year of the energy performance guarantee began. Oops. Sorry. My own technical difficulties here. So, brief summary of the savings guarantee. Um, annual energy use associated with upgraded systems will be less than prior, prior to the project. The combined annual savings will on average exceed the amortized contract cost. Annual operation and maintenance savings from the project is based on historical expenditures. Electric and water savings are verified one time post-construction from new lighting and water conservation devices, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the numbers. And gas savings are verified annually over the contract term using utility gas meter data, and we will talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes as well. Somewhat of an eye chart, but this is the project scope summary going from left to right. ESM is energy saving method. Then there's the ESM description. And then each uh, column after that shows um, which town facilities um, were included in each of those energy savings methods. I'll just, at this point, I'll bring up there are a couple of um, blanks that some folks may wonder about. Um, if you look under lighting and lighting controls, the central library is not included. Uh, because that was included under the Siemens energy performance contract, which was kind of a very mini version of this, completed in 2012, if I recall. And it was determined in the uh, Honeywell investment grade audit that further upgrade was not financially worth it at that time. And then the other big uh, question or gap is in the middle of this uh, spreadsheet, you'll see JFK Middle School is mostly blank with the exception of the lighting upgrades, and that's because we were on the verge of the first referendum for full school renovation. So we withheld tackling that school at that time. Highlights of the mechanical upgrades. So the Central Library received a new HVAC system. Um, we converted from uh, fuel oil to natural gas and finally received central air conditioning. Town Hall received a new high efficiency boiler, uh, which it's amazing if you go in the boiler room, it, the, uh, these things are so small compared to the original <laughs> boilers. Uh, and then boiler uh, replacements also took place in Eli Whitney, Edgar Parkman, Enfield Street School, and also adult daycare. And those were, uh, I believe, the original boilers for those buildings. Lighting highlight, highlights uh, approximately 3,700. LED street lights installed, um, new LED lights at most of our town properties. Um, there are uh, exceptions there as well, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, motion sensors for lighting controls in, uh, installed at appropriate locations. Building control highlights, uh, new integrated, what's called front end, ties all buildings together on a common platform for ease of management. All systems fully recommi recommissioned for better control and function. 
uh, and new energy management strategy uh, so that when buildings are, are unoccupied, um, we have automatically adjusted uh, temperatures uh, and ventilation set points to reflect unoccupied mode. And the funny squiggly lines in the picture on top there is just a, a sample readout of the building management system, which shows um, during the course of a regular work week, um, the peaks are when the building is occupied and the valleys are when the building is not occupied. Summary of the project benefits, about a 22% combined reduction in town and school energy use. Uh, and that it varies greatly based on which uh, energy savings method we're talking about. Better control of, far better control of HVAC, HVAC system, uh, improved occupant comfort, uh, f far fewer emergency service calls uh, in that included in the project, um, many mechanical and control systems were updated and or replaced, kind of as one thing was found to be faulty or almost faulty, we replaced it and then you go down the line and down the line. Uh, far fewer street light outages um, and much lower maintenance. Uh, so for example, uh, with street lights since, since completion um, of the street light project in April, uh, I, we have had less than a handful, maybe two or three light outages because of the street light itself. And those were, we have um, attic stock as part of the contract, those were quickly replaced. Is there a warranty for yes. those to replace the stock? free until, uh, since it's, yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. And all Honeywell work uh, was reviewed and continues to be reviewed um, by third party commissioning agent, including this gentleman here, to ensure installation quality and that we are getting the savings that we were guaranteed. So Greg, sorry, before you get yes. to the financial, any chance just quickly what, what that means? For folks, what you're, are you going to do that later? Just to roll the, you know, the, what the commission does. So f to your point, so when you get to the savings, folks, we're not just again, we're actually auditing, our, you know, this process. So I don't know if you want to do it now or after. Uh, like I'll give you an introductory question or answer now. So upon the completion of the work, uh, when we signed off in April, then we began what's called the measurement and validation right. stage where it is incumbent upon Honeywell and our, um, our independent third party to verify that we are um, experiencing the savings in energy and associated costs that have been guaranteed. Right. That's what I think it's important for folks to understand before you get to the financials that, again, this is being, I, I hate to use the word audited, but basically audited to make sure that the numbers, again, that what we're showing you is accurate. If you want to talk to it later, that's fine. That's, yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So in the financial summary, um, the total project cost, just under uh, 9 million. We received just under uh, 1.7 million of incentive from Eversource, uh, bringing the net project cost to the town of, to about 7.2 million. The contract duration is 15 years. First year guaranteed savings, and we'll talk more about this uh, sh very shortly, 651,000. And then we pay an uh, annual measurement and validation service charge as part of the agreement of 47,000. So go ahead, yep. Measure, measurement and validation is the, as part of the contract, the service that we pay for to in, ensure that we are receiving uh, or experiencing the guaranteed 
energy and cost savings. So the town is paying that. Now, the town is paying Honeywell $47,000 a year. Yes. That's correct. And that is, we have a third party who is also reviewing that. The contract can last for 15 years. We're not obligated to do 15 years. The objective is to get perhaps two or three years of data under our belts and validated, verified, to make sure that it is working as promised. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, let's go, yeah. I just, we might as well answer the, all the questions on that at this time. So this actually comes out of the, the savings that we have. Now, if we decide after three years that we no longer need validation. Your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. If we no longer need validation, does that do anything to the contract? Guaranteed mounts. Can when you, you just feel, that? you know, it sounds like you just feel comfortable and just going to go with it. Uh, the way the contract is structured is if you elect to terminate the M&V services from Honeywell, you're, you're going to no longer have a, a guaranteed savings. So you'll be right, so In year 11, everything starts really falling apart. If we decided in year five that we didn't need it anymore, we're, we're not going to get what was guaranteed to us. Thank you. Just... Going back. Just playing off of it. Yes. Go ahead, Greg. Then, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, going back to the Siemens Energy Performance Contract, which had the same type of uh, setup, uh, that went out, I, I don't remember exactly how many years, but we terminated that after six years. Councilor Denny. I'm confused, very, because we're paying Honeywell $47,000 a year to guarantee that we're getting the savings, yet we're paying him, this consultant third party, to tell us that we're getting the savings. So why are we paying it twice? He's not working for nothing. I, I, I'm not, sir, I'm not pointing you out <laughs> with your company or whatever. He's guaranteeing us, correct, that he's the third party, and we're paying Honeywell also? I'm confused. Can you explain uh, that? Yes, un understood. Yep. Also, yep. Good question. Go Sorry, go ahead. Typically, an performance contract has the measurement and validation stage at the end, where the company who did the work is usually employed to also do the validation. We chose to have a third party uh, just do the double validation to make sure that everything is accurate. Um, simply because, yes, the, the, the company that did the work is the company that is doing the bulk of the validation. So in the first round of validation, uh, which we just received, for tremendously large volumes of data, um, it was helpful to have a third party um, to help us review, and make sure that we understood what we're looking at and that it made sense. Okay. Yeah. And, and I mean, great question. Good. Sure. So it depends on the yeah. line, your line of work. It's not, I know it seems a little weird, but it is not unusual when an organization, whatever your line of work may be, you know, you put, when you put guarantees or you put performance guarantees out there, whatever it may be, or risks, that you, again, you actually, you do charge a little bit for that validation because you're right, it does actually cost the company who's doing it the money to produce the reports and the debt to track the data and maybe even set up the reports. Uh, Ed's, Ed's question is valid. I'm glad that we did go the route of a third party auditor, or excuse me, I, I, if you're not an auditor, I apologize if I'm using the wrong, Validator, I'll use that word, because if you're not an auditor, because again, that happens again in a lot of industries, where again, if the, the two parties would like a, just to make sure that everyone's on the up and up, and it certainly behooves Honeywell not to 
not to be dishonest because then we go get another contract. <laughs> so there's their avoidance of the contract. And if I'm understanding kind of Ed's qu counselor Denny's question to you, and I think you answered it right, but if I'm yeah, see, I mean, I, I, that's why I'm seeing how the triangle, so to speak, works. Uh, yeah, I, I think I wanted to just add, just clarify your, to your point. Um, I'm not duplicating the work that Honeywell's right. doing. My company is not. Right. We're really reviewing their reports and their data right. and, and how they connect it. Um, so it's, I, would, I would classify it as a review rather than a, a duplicate right. of work. Okay, yep. very good. All right, thank you. It, it, it's similar to when we have our health insurance, yeah, where it. we have a consultant, even though we have our own vendor. Similar idea. Just saying. Yep. You have valid questions. Fair question. And I don't mean to ask. <laughs> Greg, I totally know this is not you. Honeywell should be answering my questions. So I'm, I'm just going to mumble over here by myself. Any other questions on the financials? Specific. Thank you, sir. Go right ahead. So, next chart is showing um, energy savings. Uh, to date, and these are for electricity uh, only. This is from project completion. Um, the first column shows what was predicted. The second column shows what has actually been verified to date in the first uh, validation report that we just received. The third column shows uh, percent deviation from what was predicted. The first thing you might notice is that um, the saving, verified savings are actually a little bit higher than what was predicted. And I will let Kai explain what that deviation is, is about. Uh, I, the primary reason why the savings came out better uh, for your project is um, changes in scope as Honeywell and pushed through their design phase. Um, more work was brought in. Um, they were able to do some of the work for less cost, and we rolled in more scope. So there's significant increase in lighting and street lighting um, and some other changes for the plug devices that added more quantities of energy-saving devices. Any questions? Susan? I guess I always say that the, the lights pay for the boilers. Is that something that you normally see in boilers? It's a little bigger than I expected, but I did not expect that boilers, boilers are generally replaced because they fail. Thank you. Uh, one comment about the boiler, and, and that was the next point I wanted to uh, make is that yes we're showing a negative but keep in mind that this is energy savings from electricity only so once we're not at the point where we can actually validate natural gas savings because we haven't had a heating system a uh, heating season yet that's coming that will become a positive number post heating Greg, season. just curious in a contract is there I mean is there do they earn incentives for certain achieving certain levels of savings was that part of the contract no just sort of a I don't know what we want to call it, cliff cliff type thing uh, arrangement was just simply they were here's your guaranteed savings whether they came in or came above correct right so it's sort of a you know flat line number as opposed to some cliff cliff uh, what we would call cliff approaches where you know you get x for this you get x for y so it's more of the basically here's the number and that's what we're going to achieve Correct. got it okay yep. any questions from anyone else no just on that on that no yeah no okay go ahead okay the next chart is showing uh dollar savings and again we see uh guaranteed utility savings uh, versus what has been verified with the first round of verification. And again, it reflects a, a little bit of uh, in, better savings than, than what was anticipated for the same reason. The scope, project scope had changed a little bit. Want to 
add anything to that. So looking forward, um, obviously the town must operate and maintain uh, our new equipment consistent with the agreed to standards and manufacturer operating and maintenance instructions to maintain those savings. Um, Honeywell will, will review the equipment trend data and utility use quarterly um, in, in that measurement and validation uh, part of the contract that we just discussed. They'll report, continue to report findings to the town, uh, and we will have them uh, double, double reviewed by our third party until we decide that uh, we are satisfy, satisfied with the, the savings and uh, we are free to uh, terminate that contract um, at some point in the future. That was it. We'll take additional questions. Very patient, Councillor Sakala. We'll go to her first. She's very patient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. I, I guess I have a couple of questions and or comments. Um, and I get the first one may be really stupid. I thought the air conditioning at the library broke. Wasn't that what? What did we replace at the central library? Wasn't it the wasn't it the air conditioning unit? Yes. Yep. Oh, there we go. So would that have been after? So we did not, when I can only speak for my period here with the town, so when I joined the town, the air, the, there was no central air working at the library. I think we went through, was it one cooling season without? Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So. so was that what Honeywell had? Okay, so why don't? So, so I guess I need to be told what Honeywell did and what broke, and was it the same thing that broke that Honeywell did? Yes, we had have had it installed a brand new central air condition system. Honeywell did. Yes. Okay. Through the project, and then that far more efficient. Okay. And, and please understand that any of my, if it comes off as frustration, is not at you. I'm just, you're here. Mm -hmm. So that broke. Who paid for the replacement? We did. It came out of the Honeywell. That was part of, Sorry, the, Honeywell part of the Honeywell performance Honeywell. contract. Okay. It, the, All right. It I just want to make sure. Extend. What happened is the, when it broke, they brought in temporary mm -hmm. air conditioners. And that's what we paid and for. And we, we brought the gas lines in front down middle road and then the referendum passed thank god and we were able to put it in if we couldn't if we did not pass the referendum it would have came out of our budget right. and not been in part of the performance contract Perfect. and there was confusion because we did look at a library grant but we did not use that grant for anything okay um i guess my next comment would probably be more towards you chris but i will tell you that since the lights have been replaced, the light, the street lights, the light on the corner of Old King and Grandview never works for more than a couple of days every time it's fixed. Just for what it's worth, I don't know who should be looking Probably at that. Never but it never works for more than a couple of days. Yeah, right. I'm and sorry. I'm going to send it right again. back to Greg and Donald yeah. for them to look into it. And you have to speak up because the new, efficient, super quiet. Air conditioning is uh, behind me mm -hmm. and it's drowning out anything you're saying. So it's uh, hard for it's me to hear on you. on the corner of Old King mm -hmm. and Grandview Drive. Okay. That light, that street light, every time it's fixed, it only works for a couple of days and then it's out again. Okay. So, um, it might be an Eversource thing, but we don't, we don't call Eversource. Yes, they, the yeah. level of service we're receiving from Eversource hasn't changed. Hmm. That's a bummer. <laughs> All right, and I guess my last question, it may not actually be my last question, so I shouldn't say that. I, I need to go back to this measurement and validation service charge. Who chose the reviewing third party? Who cho chose to, who chose that company? Uh, I, I actually don't know the selection for Peregrine's introduction, but we were working before 
you decided to go with a performance contract, we did the initial um, town building assessments that were part of that RFP process that went out. Um, so we we really been working with the town for quite a, while, a long while. All right. So you don't know if the town picked the third party reviewer or if Honeywell did. No, Honeywell did not. Or, we did. We we, them. we did. So, so, okay. so Gina, sorry. Go ahead. Peregrine actually worked with Clean Energy to do the energy strategy for town, and that was when Derek was here, and that was part of Derek's hire for who would be the third party reviewer was Peregrine, and that was how it went forward. So, okay, happened a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. You saw I guess, the floor guide. Yep. Sorry. No, I mean I just I'm not going to be able to wrap my head around this service charge it's going to bug well, me for a well, while we, we can get more information i think as the mayor said and i think not being an expert in it either th th this is pretty standard this is how they proceed with these but yeah. these are all good questions yep. no, that should be question. asked yep. that should be asked before we sign the contract and go out to referendum so i think maybe the the uh lesson here is these are good questions to ask when we're considering whether or not we're going to do the project because really the horse has left the barn at this point I'm glad we are realizing more savings than we had anticipated, mm -hmm. but also we can now look at Gina because apparently under the contract, we have discretion as to for how long we utilize those services. So that's something we can look at and determine if it's something that's in our best interest to go forward. I think probably it is for a number of years just to make sure they're delivering what they're supposed to because we can get out of the contract if they're not. But I mean, all of these things have already been uh, reviewed and signed and approved by the right. council and at referendum so and, and that's fine but yeah. when you when and I know I understand that this is really just to show us what we're saving and sort of what we're paying out and that's what I'm trying to break down and I'm yep. not saying that it may be very normal no. but I've dealt with all of this <laughs> energy and contracting that's it this yep. is the one and only I've ever dealt with so when I'm trying to review it and maybe the general public understands it more than I do I don't know but I just feel I, like if I have questions, I'm going to ask them. And if I still have questions, we'll ask, ask more. it again. <laughs> and if we need Honeywell, we'll bring them in too, um, Ms. Gina. I can give you just a quick frame of reference. The last energy performance contract with Siemens, which ended, I believe, in 2012, the approximate annual savings that resulted from that is about $35,000. And the measurement and validation phase of that contract, the town paid roughly uh, $6,000, five or $6,000 for that annually. So it's kind of a mini version mm -hmm. of this. Okay. All right, thank you. What's that, Councilor Scala? Deputy Mayor Suzak, then Councilor Ungar, then Councilor Denny. Okay. Number one, I believe that those costs are calculated in when they look at the how much you're going to save and how the payback period is. And that was part of what we looked at when we voted to send this to referendum twice. So these are our good questions, but, you know, they're questions that we've, we've answered along the way. So I, you know, it, it looks like a big number, but it's what we sometimes need to do and I know um, got a lot of pushback from people who are in the facilities business when you do do a performance contract because you know you're tied to Honeywell you're tied to a specific vendor but you do get stuff done and I think you know the street lights and the and the the boiler replacements that we've done and everything else has truly benefited the town uh, and it, the work was done in 18 months, which we sometimes don't see that happen in the town. So for me, I'm excited to see it. And, you know, Greg's been keeping us um, updated, and we've been, it's really great to see it all in one place. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. I just don't understand. You said that if we didn't pay the M&V service charge, that there's no guarantee on the savings. But if all that work was already done, how is there no guarantee? You know, the lights are changed, the boilers are replaced, the air conditioning's done. Uh, I didn't mean to infer that you wouldn't get savings. It's just that Honeywell would not be responsible um, for, for meeting their guaranteed numbers. It, it voids the contract, basically what he's saying. Oh, OK. 
Okay. You would still, you, you would still, yeah. you know, if you change the that. if you change the light bulb, you're going to re be receiving savings, right. um, as long as the light bulb's still in service. Okay, okay, that's a difference. Thank you, uh, Councilor Denny. You said something about the boilers and we're negative. Is it because we're waiting for the winter? Yeah. Is that what you? Meant? Correct. You got to miss that. Yes, the, the project was completed really at the end of the last heating season. So we're waiting. So we didn't have a, really didn't have heating season. It's wider, it's wider. No. The boilers were being installed during last heating season. Yes. So we're, we're, we're waiting the natural gas use from the upcoming heating season. I'm sorry, my mic is not on, but correct. It's for it's fuel, either gas fuel, or, yes. or oil. And in oh. in addition, will be uh, the fact that the central library is no longer he will be heated with um, fuel oil. So there'll be some savings there as well. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Casati. Yeah. Just one one quick question. Um, I see the first year guaranteed savings, a uh, little over $650,000 uh, projection. Then with next year and the year after projected savings, are we figuring it's going to be more than that or less? The way the contract is structured as far as the guaranteed, it's in native units of energy. In other words, electrical kilowatt hours or therms of gas. And the contract has a... Uh, um, an assumption that there's a, I think it's a two or two and a half percent escalation in utility costs year to year. So they, okay. it's a, just a straight formula that's right from the contract that calculates, converts those native energy units to dollars. Okay. So it's taken into consideration. Go right ahead. Oh, right. So it's taken in, yeah. so the contract's taken into con the consideration of increase in the fuel costs and electrical costs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, I thought that's what you said. Sorry, go ahead. You, yeah, yep. no, so Sorry, <laughs> the projected savings looking at less than that. I'm, I'm, as the, the, way that, the way it works with the escalation is that the savings increases. Savings assuming will assuming increase. the, 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 right. the energy units stay the same, every year the savings is going to increase a little bit with the assumption that, that your rates are going up. It's just a stipulation that was made as part of the ne negotiation for the contract. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. That clarifies. So, and so I had two questions. So, it, so the, the initial investment that Honeywell has made, it behooves them to continue to, if they want to make, A, if assuming they want to make X amount of dollars in the contract, whatever it may be, so it behooves them to make sure they, you know, they meet their their you know their performance because if they don't, and we decide, it's we're not saving as much as we want. We walk away and we go to bid somewhere else. They don't make their money in any initial investment that they put up. So it makes sense to have what you're saying about the escalators and other things because the bottom line is they don't want to lose money in the project. So I think that's part of some of the service fee things. And I understand Councilor Sakala's question, but I think the bottom line: Honeywell needs to make money. If they don't make money. It's really not worth their investment. We want to make, see the savings, which is what we benefit from it. And so, so, so I understand the contract. It's interesting. We do something similar in, in a different line of work. Is 15%, I don't know if you can, is 15% greater? So the 15% above the, you know, the, the proposed or the, the number in the sand, is that average, normal? Don't know that? You know what I mean? Is that, if you've been involved in other contracts, is that, generally you know kind of the like a plus or minus right i guess is my question is that normal are you asking the the, the range of tolerance on the so say if they were saying savings or the number cost? say they were saying they're going to save a million bucks they save the million two yeah whatever you know i'm just saying round numbers the generally the exceeding of savings is that expected or is that normal in any of your experience with other these kind of contracts oh my experience is um they usually meet the most of these escos meet their numbers because they have safety factors built right, in agree. and yeah, they're no, going to have yeah. some buildings that are going to perform really well and some that aren't and th the way the contract is structured is is you add them all together right. and the, and the averages they they tend to work yeah i mean i know they're managing their risk of course they they need to make it so the question you you mentioned what was the scope change 
you, you mentioned a scope change to help generate more savings. What was that scope change? Most of the scope changes were, were um, as I said, when they got into really into the details of the design um, and lighting audits, they found more work that could be done, and there was enough money in the right. contingency and, and whatnot to add those that scope in. So, for my what I'd like to do is make sure we have have these gentlemen here six every six months, if we could, so we can go over to to the counselor Danny's question about some of the heat and some of those things. So, so I think this is important because it's a referendum question. And I think it's important that, again, we provide as much detail and have as much back and forth. That's the purpose of these meetings is the town manager laid out and, again, give you folks an opportunity to kind of show what, again, we're, you know, the folks approved and kind of how it's working. So I would like, if we could, six months from now in the winter, if we can invite you back for a 6 o'clock meeting, so maybe some of the questions that you know, Councillor Denny asked about fuel and other things, right. so folks know that they got their money's worth. And then the question then becomes, to your point, Greg, when do we decide... So, so it behooves Honeywell and these kind of contracts to perform better, not just the first few years, but they don't want to lose the contract. So then what do, how do we address that next as we look forward where we can get more bang for the buck, more savings, you know, for the, for the, the price that we're, you know, for what we're doing. And once we have the data, you know, to your point, you really need three years roughly of data to make a comparison. And then if we feel that it's, we're not getting the savings we deserve for what we're spending, then you go back to bid, because then you're going to have other companies with going to be able to bid on what you're doing because we have real data, and saying, look, here's what we got from this competitor at this cost. Can you beat it? And at what cost can that be? So I think that's the value of when, when we hang on for a few years is having that data actually puts the town in a position to actually bid other companies if someone can do it better. And I, you know, and I think that's the value. I agree that we. We need to live with this contract for a few years so we can get real data to actually show, you know, kind of a over, you know, multi-year result. And so I was just, you know, just kind of my opinion on that. Uh, agree. And as far as the next meeting, uh, my suggestion would be we do it post-heating season. Okay. So maybe May. Is that okay uh, with you folks? So we will. I think it would be to show some value. I think Councilor Denny asked a great question on the heating. So just to give folks mm -hmm. the total view of what they approved in a referendum. Sorry, I Deputy Mayor Suzak. I think that we all have to remember that the savings is in units of energy and the dollar values vary depending on the market value of energy. I mean, this is because everybody gets caught up in the dollars and then they don't really know what a performance contract is. It's really, in the bottom line, is it's going to lower your carbon footprint. For everybody out there who wants to hug a tree, that's really what we're doing here in Enfield. We're trying to lower our carbon footprint, and when we do that, we use less units of energy, and that is what the performance contract guarantees, is the use of less units of energy. And the price of that energy is where we get our savings. If the bottom drops out, in the cost of energy, and it goes down to almost nil, <coughs> we are not going to see the dollar savings, but we are still going to see the units of energy savings. So Honeywell will still meet its contractual obligations. Correct? Yep. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So having said all that, so then the question becomes, Thank you. Um, what was, the, uh, what was my question? You actually took my turn of thought away. Oh, sorry, Mike. Uh, oh, I forgot the question. It but, was uh, your turn to get hot last time, my turn this time. Any other? I can't remember the question I was going to ask, actually. Any other questions? Anyone? So anything else from you gentlemen while you're here? You have the floor. We have 10 minutes or five minutes. Uh, just to comment that um, as somebody had mentioned, follow-up projects, um, I mean, we're in the midst of uh, receiving, we will be receiving bids for a new town hall chiller, um, and that will be using the, con the remaining contingency cool. from the project. So now I got my question, Craig. Yeah. So some of the work we're doing here, is it allowed us or will allow us to apply for other grants? It's gone? Okay, I'm just curious. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, although we are researching possibility of um, incentives from Eversource for the chiller. Okay, got yeah. it, okay. That's how they balance the budget. Okay. We got our money, though. 
Anything else, gentlemen? Thank you very much for coming. I think this was informative. And again, we look forward to seeing you next spring with hopefully good news on our fuel. Thank you. Thank you. Take a break. Yeah. Uh, motion to, I'm oh, sorry, make sure, uh, Suzanne, I make sure I got, um, I, my Robert's rules have been slipping, Suzanne, and I apologize. Uh, we have a uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Councilor Falk, seconded by Councilor Denny. All those in favor? All in favor. First meeting is uh, adjourned. We will start the regular meeting of five minutes.
Monday, September 17th. Sorry, it's 7.04, a few minutes late. Um, prayer, Councillor Muller. I'd like to have a moment of silence for Justin Brady and Thomas Arnone. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item three, roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungar. Here. Councillor Arnone. Councillor Bosco. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Grisati. Here. Councillor Davis. Councillor Denny. Here. Councillor Fall. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. There's eight members present for your absence. Item number four, the fire evacuation announcement. In case of fire, please exit orderly to the back of the building. You can either go left or right throughout the doors or go through the doors to my left, your right, go through the first doors once exiting, go down the stairs and out through the door and then meet in the parking lot and uh, safely away from the building. Item number five, minutes of the preceding meetings. We had a special meeting on September 4th, 2018 to have a motion to approve. So moved. By Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Denny. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, any abstentions? We have, uh, was that nine in favor? Excuse me, eight in favor? Eight in favor, no abstentions. Uh, motion to approve the regular meeting of September 4th, 2018. So moved. Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Ungeyer. Any discussion under motion? Hearing none, by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, abstentions, eight in favor? Zero against. That. Item number six, we'll move right on to special guests. We have tonight um, the Network Against Dome Domestic Abuse. And I, again, I apologize up front. Uh, Analysa? Elisa, Elisa, sorry. Yeah, where's the Joneses and the Smiths? And uh, welcome. Sorry for ruining your name. Okay. Welcome. How you doing? Sorry about that. Annalisa. Yeah, look at that. I got it down. Second time. Annalisa, just your name and your title at your organization, and you have the floor. Welcome. Okay. Thank you for having me. My name is Annalisa Deal, and I work with the Network Against Domestic Abuse as a community youth educator. And I'm here today to talk to you about a couple of things in October, because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and purple is our awareness color and the color of the domestic violence ribbons. Since this is an issue that impacts all kinds of people, but also people in Enfield, we want to raise awareness to let people know that there's services and there's help available for them. So one new initiative that we're trying this year is the Wear Purple Day on Wednesday, October 10th. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Our vision for that was hopefully to get as many people as we can in the town of Enfield to wear some kind of purple. It could be a purple shirt, a purple tie, purple jewelry, anything that a person's able to do. If people wanted to take pictures of their groups doing this, they could send it to us and we could put it on the social media or website as well. But mostly just to get people around town wearing the color and talking about what it means so that people are more familiar with the fact that this exists and there are services because we find a lot of times that people don't necessarily know that and that's when some of the more dangerous situations happen when they don't know there's someone there for them. So we just wanted to spread the word in that simple way. 
It started as an idea with as Nantuck Community College, so they're going to be doing tabling events and a chair massage and all sorts of things throughout the day to raise awareness as well. But we wanted to try and spread it out into the community as a whole as much as possible as well. So we are encouraging people to do that and wanted to let the town know. We were also wondering if it would be possible to maybe get a proclamation of the Purple Day from the town council. I will uh, take it up with Deb. I'll send her an email. Okay. And just so you can send me your email and we'll work with, through it with you. Okay, no that would be great. Yep, Thank you. No problem. Um, and then the, the other item I gave you is just an invitation for our Purple event, which is one of our big fundraising events in the year that helps to educate people even more and raise funds for the work that we do. But that's really it, unless anybody has any questions. Any questions from any counselors? Uh, just a question on the 10th. Did you uh, hand this out through the schools to, for the kids as well? Just curious. I've been trying to contact the schools. We've worked on getting through to some people, and the goal is hopefully to get it going so through the, the school as you well. Have the chairman sitting there quietly. You can get, leave him a piece of paper before you leave, and I'm sure he will. Uh, because they may, I'll, I don't want to speak for him, but they may, mm -hmm. certain not, you know, uh, organizations are willing to send it through to the kids. Yeah, that would be great. We would be willing to come up with like a little activity or age appropriate thing as well. We have coloring pages or can make it about like safe friendships for the younger grades. So we are really hoping to be able to work with the schools as well. Cool. So the very least, just give them the paper so everyone wears sure. purple. Oh. Yeah, and I, I do have papers for anyone back there that's interested too. Any questions from anyone? Anything else you while you have the floor and you'd like to highlight while you're here? I mean, you have the floor. No? No, well, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank coming. Thank you so much. We will make sure we promote this for you to everyone, hopefully, in town wears purple on the 10th. Schools are open at that day, right? Yeah, not, it's not another half day. I'm just making sure. But we'll make sure we promote this for you, and thank you very much for the information. Where is the tower lobby area? Oh, that's um, at as Nuntuck. At as Nuntuck? Mm -hmm. Okay. Councilor Muller. Main entrance, right in the front, the new tower lobby, the new stair tower. For the record, your role? Uh, facility manager. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know that it was at as Nuntuck. Mm -hmm. And if folks haven't seen the the Malabi does not tuck, it's fantastic. I mean, folks yeah. don't realize what kind of work's been done over there. So it's it great. We really encourage great. you to go over there. Yeah. Right. Annalisa, thank you very much. We'll thank make sure we uh, we promote this for the tenth for you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Item number seven, public communications and petitions. Uh, allow everyone the opportunity to speak. We ask that again. Uh, keep personalities out of it. You have five minutes first time up, then after that, uh, three minutes. Um, would anyone like to speak for the council? Mr. Cruzel. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. Uh, owner of Five Peerless Way, Peerless Tool and Machine, but my third hat today, Chairman of the Board, Enfield, Enfield Public Schools. One news story that hasn't been publicized because of all our, what's been going on in the last week, the football team is 2-0. and They won two games at, at away schools, with real tough schools, so I am putting out a Chairman's Challenge that we get Everybody and anybody at the home game this Friday night, 7 o'clock, down at Enfield High. Cheer on these, these guys. They're doing a great job this season. And whatever we can do to get as many people there to cheer them on, they surely appreciate it. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can I ask them what time it starts? Se seven. Seven, seven o'clock, Friday night, down at the uh, turf field. Any opponent, sir? Uh, Conrad, I believe. Conrad, Conrad. very Conrad, very good. Conrad, Conrad, <laughs> sorry, not Conrad. Yeah, Conrad. Must be, uh, yeah, it must be Conrad, yeah, well. Exactly. Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Jack.
Welcome, Jack. Thank you. Jack Sheridan, 7 Buchanan Road. Um, first, I get on the record because Donna couldn't believe that I was agreeing with her with a presentation, <laughs> but... Uh, Jack, I, J Jack, don't be modest. Explain to people who is the author of the energy <laughs> audit, Jack. Don't be modest. Well, the thing is, that was, that was part of our yeah. citizens audit thing, and I did a pretty extensive thing on it, so I know that Donna had a pretty good grasp of explaining what we were, how we're looking at the savings. The other thing I wanted to make clear was that the audit, the council actually decided that that would be a, the, the reviewer guy that was checking the thing would be a good idea because otherwise, who were we to say was going to give us the savings? But Honeywell, they're the people that are supposed to be doing it. Naturally, they're going to pat themselves on the back. So I think it's a good thing that, that you actually did that because and the guarantee is not the guarantee on the equipment. The guarantee is on the savings, because if they don't make the savings, Honeywell's going to make up the difference. That's, that's a big thing. So I'm glad to see the savings so far. Um, as you, I'm, I'm interested to see, because when I saw the 22% savings, I said, wait a minute, that's got to be just electricity. But it didn't say that. It, they didn't separate electricity and, and gas or oil. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Don, do you know, if, I don't think they put any oil furnaces in, did they? They're all gas now? All gas? They're all gas. Yeah, because for a while we had, when we did the audit, they had dual purpose. They had gas and oil. And so that, I think, is a big improvement that, that you know, they're going to be more efficient. Um, and the other thing I had was the thing that bothers me about JFK and the referendum is... You're talking about the state money, but what happens is, and people don't realize this, if we take state money, then we have to take state kids. They have to take, we have to fill the seats. If they find out there are empty seats, we're going to bust more kids in. We're busting in about 88 kids now. So, and these are choice kids. So we're getting what, 2,000 a piece? And it costs us $16,056, $16,056 for each student. So we're getting 2000 So if that is an empire building, I don't know what is. If you, if you have people in this town paying for schools that are going to be occupied by people that are busting, and those numbers are going up. It's, I think the prediction was up to 127 next year and 134 or 43 the year after. So why are we building schools with more seats than we need? A while back, Glastonbury had, was in a similar situation, and they were going to add to a school, and the voters voted it down because they didn't want to accept grant money because they knew what came along with the grant money was fill the seats. And that's not a good thing. So I'm here to just try and educate the public to know that we're building a school beyond our requirements, beyond our needs. We're downturning, and I'll, I'll tell you again and again, I've said it, 18 years with, on average, 200 fewer students every year for 18 years. Hello. Why would we put additions on anything? And, and, and that's the part that bothers me. It's a, and it, beyond the fact that the state doesn't have any money. And the state, their credit's in the dumpster. So, so they're going to pay big interest. I don't know what their interest rates will be on that amount, but we're going to wind up paying it. So people don't like me to keep saying it's my other pocket, but it is. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Charlie. Welcome, sir. Charlie Woods, 11 Wesley Drive. One of the disadvantages of being friends with Jack is that you talk over business and, and the first guy up steals all the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but he's absolutely correct. There's, uh, there's a lot of things that I, I see that's wrong with putting this money toward 
uh, JFK. I mean, we've got three other buildings sitting around. One of them, thank goodness, we are using it as an annex, although I don't have any confidence as to what's in that building. Are we really realizing any savings or are we using some of the floor space for non-town non items? One of the ones that comes to mind, of course, is this pre-kindergarten. They were using a lot of our facilities and that's a private company. So that kind of thing bothers me. Not that it bothers me to have kids be pre-educated. It's who's paying for it all. Uh, but uh, so for that reason, I know of an incident that happened in the school with two kids that came up from Harford where they threatened a female teacher. And luckily there was a male teacher who walked by, saw what was going on and put a stop to it. One of the things that we, we in this town don't have, we have no control over what the pre-existing situation are. And that not only applies to the school, but it applies to this energy study. <coughs> you know, I've done a lot of studies just like what they're running right now. And only I did them for a federal government. And uh, luckily we could draw from four or five different bases across the United States for our information. We don't have that luxury here. But one of the things that I thought about was our actual costs. We, we must have on the books every cent we spend. Don't we have a method of collecting it and, and charging that expense against a specific uh, work center so that we know what our actual costs really should be? That's what we ought to be comparing, not what somebody thinks, not what today is or tomorrow is, but what's been going on over a period of time. Other than that, how can you tell whether you are improving or, or, or not improving? One of the things that I noticed on there, they showed a savings, but they never added back the $47,000 we got to give them on top of that. And the money we got from Eversource, is that going to happen every year? I don't think so. So that means that your cost is going to go up. Donna, you, you don't think so, but you do. I understand. If you don't get that money from people like Eversource, that's going to give you the, the money. It's like getting a grant. It's getting a grant from Eversource. Well, then you have to pay for it. So that's not figured in when they show you the one year with that, that given back to us. So we need to be careful about what we're comparing. And we need to know uh, what our real basis is. And I know that town must have all this information. They should be able to draw it out from somewhere. Uh, you know, uh, every time you bring on a program, you should know what your previous cost is because we paid it. So you ought to know whether you're getting a good deal <coughs> or not. And I, uh, the only thing I ask the town council to do is to be more diligent in making a selection about who you're going to get, not just necessarily who, but what you're paying for, what you're getting, what the original cost was, and whether there is a true savings or not. You know, it would bother me if I was paying for something like that and my light was out all the time. It, that means something's still wrong with the system. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Karen. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Congratulations to our new town manager. Um, I think everybody, or a lot of people, got their sewer bills a week or two ago, and that's what I would like to comment on my most recent sewer bill. I'm a well user at my house, so it's a little different than a lot of people get. The original sewer billing went into effect on January 1st, 2014. The first bill I received was dated April 28th. 
So this was for user, sewer user fees for January, February, and March. Um, there has never been a data service on my sewer bills. Unlike the metered customers, it shows when your water meter was read. They never tell you what you're paying for on the sewer bill on a well user, okay, which has been a, an issue with me for a while, since the beginning. Um, so that, that is an issue for someone trying to determine when a rate increase goes into effect, why am I paying this amount? Um, so I can assume that my bills are still coming calendar quarters. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, so forth, okay? And, and I'm being billed in arrears just like the, the metered customers because you can't bill somebody for something they haven't used yet. Um, but I guess someone must have confused the sewer billing people down at CompuTil. Um, when they were informed there, were, there was a rate increase because they couldn't get the June bills out until September, even though the old rates still applied until after July 1st. The problem with my bill, the April, May, and June billing, is that it's at the new rate. So I'm pay those rates didn't get approved till May 20-whatever, and I'm being billed because they printed the bill in, in September, I'm being billed at the new rates, and I believe there are others. Um, so in the utility industry, if a rate is changed during any billing period and the meters are not read on the date that it's going to be changed, then all bills must be prorated. So if my bill goes from April 15th to July 15th, then I only pay 15 days of that bill on the new rate. I would think that would apply to all sewer bills too. The flat rate for well users was $43.32, and it's now $43.84. So I appreciate the fact that we were able to hold that fee down. Um, so even though that part of my bill is wrong, that's not the biggest issue. The issue is the ready to serve charge. The documents provided for the public hearing in May showed the ready to serve charge by meter size. Well, as a well user, I don't have a meter. You cannot charge me or any other non-metered customer a ready to serve fixed quarterly charge based on meter size. And it has it on my bill. The town website has an article posted September 11th trying to clear this up. Um, but it's stated incorrectly, quote, well users are charged based on the smallest meter size, unquote. That wasn't anywhere in the rate structure during the public hearing. It didn't come up in the minutes. It didn't come up anywhere. The approved service, sewer service fee scheduled, um, again, doesn't have it anywhere, well users without meters should not and cannot be charged this fee. Also within that same article, it incorrectly states, quote, your quarterly charge is based on your meter and pipe size, end quote. Is it based on the pipe size or the meter size? Those are usually two different things. What size did the water company send to the billing company for billing. Did it send the meter size or the service size? Most likely they only have a record on their billing file of the meter size because that's what they bill on. Um, a typical house may have a service pipe that is one inch K copper uh, from the street, but it gets sized down to either a 5 eighths by 3 quarter meter, um, which would be considered a 5 eighths meter, um, or it may be a three-quarter meter or whatever. 20 seconds, sorry. Okay. Didn't want to interrupt. Again, the rates went into effect July 1st just because the billing company is billing in September for sewage disposal of in April, May, and June. We should not be charged the new rate until we are bill being billed for services performed or water used on or after July 1st. 
all metered customer bills should be prorated based upon the dates of the water meter reading. I have a few other, couple others. Wrap you up. want me to? Yeah, no, you can wrap up. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, no worries. I have not received a bill for my rental property that uses Connecticut water, but a friend has received a sewer bill dated September 4th for water used from Hazardville Water. The billing dates were from 115.18 to 415.18. April 15th, they're getting the bill in September. The consumption was 10,000 gallons at $3.39, which is the old rate, um, which was correct. But they were charged a ready to serve charge for a three quarter inch meter, which is what they have, um, which was on the bill for an additional 3150. As this bill was for sewerage from January to April, the ready to serve charge should not have been charged and their next bill should be prorated because it'll probably be, be between April and July 15th. So the other matter I don't believe the WPCA anticipated when changing these rates is how much did this billing company and the water companies charge the town because the original documents that you were sending, the in original information requested, did not include meter size. So now they've not only got to change the program at the water company that says this is the data we're going to send you now for both Hasville Water, Connecticut Water, but now CompuTil has to bill differently. So it'd be interesting to know how much they charged you. And I'm wondering, sitting back here now, I'm wondering if the reason it took so long to bill was because there was contract negotiations going on and, uh, and they held off on billing until they got a new contract. So I think, again, I'm going to say you need to look at this billing in-house and find someone who knows how to do it. I believe you also need to do an audit of who is and who is not being billed and determine if the ones not being billed are connected to the sewer also, be, before turning any delinquent bills over for collection, you should be sure that they are even connected to the sewer. And one other question I have is, how do you suggest I apply for a bit billing credit? The process and the forms provided online does not apply the, to this kind of a bill, a rate, a rate discrepancy. It applies only if I broke a pipe or some of those other things. So the uh, website needs to be corrected. Um, on that thing that I mentioned, and there's also another document on the website about looking for adjustments, and that's got to be adjusted because it doesn't have the correct rates in it anymore either. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. What was the exact uh, difference, if you don't mind? For what? For your, for your well. The twenty, the twenty-one. Uh, no, 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 not the surcharge, but just the. Uh, oh, the old rate was. Was minimal. Oh yeah, it was minimal. It was uh, 4384 versus 4332. So that's why I thank you for holding that number to, you know, not raising it that much for us well users. Um, and that was based on the 12,740. Uh, uh, let's see, what was it? 12,780 gallons. Okay. Thank you. We don't have enough meetings. Just yeah, yeah. Anyone else like to speak for the council? For the first time? For the second time? Jack? I guess I <clears throat> got sidetracked a little bit with my compliments before. <laughs> <laughs> So, sorry, Jack. I know it throws you for a loop when I actually know something, huh? Um, the, the, the one thing I wanted to point out about the uh, Honeywell deal was that on page two of their original assessment of the process that we went through, they had all of the buildings appraised as, as to what they needed, and JFK was on there and needed there's an X in almost every category. I think uh, street lighting in, on, in, over there wasn't. But all, all the rest of them were. Then, after the council decided to not include JFK and took all of that out, it could have been part of Honeywell and cost us a lot less money than trying to rebuild as new. They added 
they, they took all that stuff out. Now, the, the point of that is raise the amount of money that you need to spend to qualify for the grant. Whereas if you had had that done, we wouldn't have needed to do that. So I just wanted to make that clear because a lot of people out there don't understand what actually happened in that process. The other thing, just, just because I guess I don't have a lot to do, so I read the report on the uh, Public Works, 48 pages or so. On recommendation number 16, page 28, it says uh, char they, they want to begin charging the customers the full cost of vehicle main. That was one of the recommendations. Sounds great to me. I mean, each department, Len Ninny a while back said, hey, we needed to charge each department for like phone usage and things like that. And it goes back to what Charlie was saying, by department, you actually track better. So if you, if you look at that, you say that, well, the last sentence says, only the water pollution division is charged for the equipment maintenance and repair approximately 140,000 per year, the basis for which could not be ascertained. Huh? You give them $140,000 and they can't ascertain what they're spending it on? And then, and, and you can see, I've highlighted a lot of things on here, but I'm not gonna go through them all, but that kind of hit me between the eyes. The next thing that's really blatant is on page 30, it says, uh, oh, and this is under plant operations. This is uh, sewer treatment plant operations, uh, water pollution control recommendation number 17. And it says, to appropriately staff these crews, three positions must be created. Implementation and recommendation will cost $240,000. The re recommendation is in line with that of Woodward and Curran. You guys remember that name? They're the people who said what we should charge for sewer usage that was wrong. Now we're going to the same people to ask them about how many people it takes to run the sewer treatment plant and Woodward and Curran is saying that we, we, we have to have three new people at a cost of $240,000. And we all know they were the ones that recommended what we should be charging when we switched from the sewer tax to a sewer use fee. So I just wanted to point that out so that when you get a chance to read it, you'll, uh, you'll did you give me the warning sign there? Yeah, that's where I keep going. Yeah, yeah give me the warning <laughs> sign. Go ahead. No, no problem. I'm all the, like I said, there's a lot of uh, highlighting on that thing that I read, but those were the two main things I wanted you to be aware of tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for the council? Anyone else? Thank you very much. Declare public communications closed. Move to item eight, councilor communications. Anyone like Councilor Denny? Yes, well, I'm glad you came because I've been getting a lot of calls from uh, <clears throat> well users. Uh, and one of the things uh, that uh, I looked into uh, with the well users that you, I don't think you mentioned it is that there's a fee uh, that the town pays to the water companies to give us the data so we can build them. So <clears throat> for, for their meter reading. But well users shouldn't be paying that fee because they don't have a meter. And so that was brought up to me by some people who are on First and Second Avenue. I didn't realize that you people out there, some of you have wells. But a lot of people are upset with well, well is because I think, in my own opinion, <clears throat> we estimated it high to begin with. We lowered it, but it wasn't low enough. So I'd like to bring that up when we have uh, uh, WPC okay. again. And it needs to be addressed, some of these issues, uh, again. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? Councilor Falk? I just wanted to thank the town. Thank the town for mowing the grass on the uh, town farm property opposite the entrance to the uh, recycling center. Thank you very much. 
Councilor Grisotti? Um, once again, over at the boat launch landing, uh, the attention that was given to the island areas, uh, I want to thank you for uh, having uh, DPW uh, attend to that issue. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, there's a couple other things I just want to mention in regard to uh, a lot of the community activities that, that have been, you know, happening around Enfield. I know this past week uh, we had the 9-11 ceremony over at the Weymouth Firehouse to memorialize the victims and those who gave their lives for, you know, for freedom uh, and to the emergency services in the communities. Uh, a great event, um, and many of us, you know, were there. Um, I also attended uh, this past week the North Central Opiate Addiction Task Force meeting. Uh, the speaker, Charles Grady from the Connecticut FBI Community Outreach, uh, he's a specialist, and he gave the, a talk and a presentation on the life of an opioid uh, addict, opiate addict. And uh, I really recommend that this program really be uh, given to the school. So uh, I know our chairman's out there. Uh, his name's Charles Gray. It's another one out there. Uh, I just wanted to say that I think it'd be worthwhile to talk to both middle school and high school students in regard to that. Um, I want to say the Fort Town Fair, uh, which Enfield sponsored. Uh, I had the privilege to walk with Connecticut uh, Special Olympics um, in that particular, and the Allied Rehabilitation Services and the Enfield Stars. Uh, really great parade, good event. Uh, I know, Chris, you, you started it off on Friday night, was it? Yes. Yep, so that, that was a, a nice thing. Some of us even attended. Uh, the Mexican Independence Day celebration uh, in the Thompsonville section, um, the old uh, country banquet uh, hall. And let me tell you, you want to talk about uh, a community event that was uplifting, positive uh, for the area. Um, Amlicar Cordova and his wife and that, that whole uh, cultural Mexican uh, celebration was absolutely fantastic last night. Even got a little dancing in at the end, uh, which was which was pretty good. But uh, and I know uh, uh, Mayor Ludwig will probably say a few words about that. But it was just you know an awesome evening. You know we talk about some of the you know down things that have been happening in Enfield, but there's a lot of positive uh, that is out there, and it has to be recognized. Uh, with all the different activities that uh, are going on. So that's, you know, I could go on and talk about a few other things, but I'm not going to. But uh, but just trying to be, remain positive about all the good things that, that happen uh, in our town. Uh, so that's, Thank you, yeah, sir. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. I guess Karen's brought up a lot of good points, and I'm going to bring up the point that, you know, Councilman Arnone always brings up. We need to have more WPCA meetings. People need to have more contact with the WPCA. I mean, they can come and tell us this, and we, we take that information in, but we sitting here tonight, we have no power to do anything but now call a meeting. So, Mike? So I'm going to ask you to, to please, yeah. you know, champion that for me. I'll, I'll, I'll address it when. Okay, thank you. Yep. And uh, the final budget is out online for people who want to view that. I've had a couple of people um, ask questions on that. It's now out on the website. Uh, and Chris, you can address it in your report. The, the TIF legislation, I saw it in the PAR, and I'm really... I feel like Enfield's on the cusp of growing in the areas where we've really, you know, put a lot of um, effort and initiative in. And if those areas are qualified for a TIF, we want to be getting that money and redirecting it so that it stays in those areas and and improves those. And to the mayor, to I like to have Camp Tons of Fun come and tell us what a success they had this summer. Okay. 
That's and I'm one. going to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items E, F, and G to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by Councilor Falk to suspend the rules and move items E, F, G to miscellaneous. Any discussion yeah. on that motion? Hearing none by a show of hands, all those in favor? Those opposed, any abstentions? We have eight in favor, zero against. And I want to clarify. Yep, go right ahead. You okay. said before. And then for I want to clarify that Eversource is a one time grant and that money comes from when you pay your Eversource bill, there's monies that are gathered from Eversource and then we qualify for this. And now it's a one time and it's a good thing that I believe we've already received that because I don't know if that actually has money in place anymore. So we may have been very prudent to do what we did when we did. And we all have to remember again, it's energy units, not dollars. Very good. <laughs> Councilor Falk. Uh, just, just to follow up on Councilman's, Councilor Crisati's comment about the uh, FBI, they showed a uh, video, it's called Chasing the Dragon. And it's uh, a story about addicts and how they started and their, how uh, they lived their life and, and the end result after all this had taken place. And it's just so emotional that, uh, it, you know, it, it would have a very, at least to me, a very positive impact on trying to prevent drug abuse in the beginning if people could see this. So I don't know if the school system would allow that in there because it has some stuff in there that you may not like. But it's down to earth and it's real. So, yeah, it's uh, something worth considering. Thank you. Anyone else? So, uh, Chris, so maybe uh, I can send a note to Deb and we'll talk with Tom. We'll, but we can have tons of fun maybe in November to do a six, six o'clock meeting. I'm sure they have plenty to talk about, so it'll probably be a special meeting. Make sense? And I think, again, we'll chat with Tom. But maybe in October we have a water pollution control. So I know I know the agenda is getting tight, but let's, let's add that on one of them. As opposed to if we don't have a special meeting, maybe we do it with the water pollution. And I think Karen brings up some good points that we need to address. I know you sent the memo out. Maybe you'll address that in your – but I think that's probably a good idea. To, to Councillor – to Karen's points and to, to, to Deputy Mayor Suzak and Councillor uh, Denny's questions. Um, you know, and I just want to – I want to give you know, someone their due here. Um, you know, Jack Sheridan – we were joking a little earlier, you know, people don't remember back to the, when we had the audit committee for the Board of Education about, uh, probably about 10 years now. It's been a while. Jack actually was the, really the, and I'm going to say this honestly, the author of the energy audit. He had this spreadsheet that he put together back when we were doing that audit, which really started the ball rolling. And so I think, you know, you know, again, I just want to encourage folks, I mean, Folks do listen to your suggestions, and I think Jack really was the, the father of having where it came to where we are, and he did a great job. And you know, and I think, and I know there's some t some questions that we're working on, but the good news, folks, is that we did save what we say we were going to save. And and I understand it's in energy units, and I I like to look at things in dollars, so that's where I come from. I like the thing in dollars, but it's good news. And I think you know, to Charlie's point, we're going to get some data here, real data that we can use, where we can to be in a different position when it comes to actually, again, maybe improving the contract, whether it would be Honeywell or somebody else. So I think this is good news. I know you'll address as well, but I think it is good news. And, and again, in sick, when we have the, the meeting on the fuel, that again, what folks voted for, pretty much they got. And again, I think that's, and that's what's the purpose of that six o'clock meeting that you mentioned earlier. You know, I don't want to belabor that some of the other, as folks have spoke very eloquently of a lot of the good things that went on in town. You know, but I, I too, I just want to comment on the football team, um, you know, they had a tough day on Friday, obviously. You know, and those kids um, went down to Hall Unit Hall uh, High School and, and toughed out a last-minute win with 12, 17 seconds left. Very tough, emotional day for, teen, for teenagers on that team. I want to congratulate the coaching staff, you know, the superintendent, um, and, of course, the kids for just being, you know, we're, we're, again, we're a tough town. And those kids went down there and toughed out a big victory on the road. And I also want to personally, and I hope, I know, the superintendent's working a letter, but we really should send a letter to the Hall, Univers Hall High School for showing the respect to our team that they did. I heard it was they did it very, very respectful. They had, they did their part, and again, I think as a town and a school, we should make sure we thank them. So again, I, I want to thank the superintendent of West Hartford publicly for again being really a partner when we had a tough, you know, really a tough thing going on on Friday. So again, I think West Hartford needs to be congratulated. 
just want to mention again Mont Carmel and Shoprite, you know, corporate partners, and and again a nonprofit for having the hunger dinner on Friday night. Again, as Councilor Crosati said, there's so many good things going on, and uh, again having responsible corporate partners like Shoprite and of course Mont Carmel. Uh, again, makes the town what it is. They did a great job on Friday night for all those attended. I, I too, uh, you know, Council is right. The uh, I call them AC because I'm not really good at pronunciation for Mexican Independence Day. Uh, great, great uh, festival, great food, and also want to recognize Scarpetti's. Uh, excuse me, Scarpetti. Serapis. <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying to be better at Serapis. <laughs> it's uh, and when they they had their grand opening. And again, I just want to encourage our folks to get out there and go to some of these strip malls in town, especially on High Street where you have Carmen's Bakery as well. Sweet, sweet lady. These folks are, again, they need your business. We need our small businesses in town to thrive. As they do, big business will come. So again, they, their food was fantastic and I appreciate the invite. Um, one last thing, do, 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 do. sorry. Oh, uh, I, I hate to talk about mowing, but can we make sure, because I know it's on a regular mowing schedule that JFK has done before a soccer game. My understanding that the grass is sort of high there, but they've had some soccer games. If we could just look into it, that's all. And then last thing, I think, this is just something, I, I, again, I hope folks understand that as members of the council, we all, you know, we all volunteer our time, but we do listen and we do notice what's going on in town. And I want to say this, Again, just walking a dog, and I, I learn a lot by walking a dog. And I just want to recognize a gentleman named Jim. He lives on Weymouth Road. Gentleman with his dog named Chief. And does this all on his own. Doesn't do it for publicity, but I just happen to be walking my dog. And he's going up and down Weymouth Road with his little, you know, trash picker-upper and picking up all the trash that folks throw running down, you know, going down uh, Weymouth Road. I just said to him, I said, what are you doing? And he goes, you know, I just want to make sure I keep the town clean. That's great stuff. I mean, those little things matter, folks. And I just want to recognize a gentleman. His dog is, 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 is a great dog, because he always says that to my dog. But bottom line is those little things matter. They're important, and we do notice. And, and I think that's what's important about as we kind of move forward as a town, that, again, we do notice the good. We have to deal with the stuff that we have to deal with. But, again, there is more good than bad, and there always is. And I think, um, like I said, uh, just those little things like that really do matter. And so um, that's all I'm going to say. I think that's all I got. Make sure. And, I, and so we will work on with, when, Tom, when Tom gets back on water pollution control. And I know you'll address a couple other things. And tons of fun, say, for probably for November, I would assume, because I know we are booked for October, I think. But if I'll let you. Uh, and that's all I got. I, yep. I, I don't know. I feel like the, the performance um, contract clarifier here. The reason that we go to a performance contract is because we had the original referendum was for $11 million worth of equipment and the cost for installation. And the money that we save pays back, basically it's a loan to Honeywell. So you're actually bonding through this program and the savings pays back and we do get extra money in our kitty from whatever that, for lack of a better word, loan payment. Basically, if you are willing to open your own pocket, take the money out, buy the equipment out of your pocket, all the savings goes back in your pocket. The reason that we had the performance contract is the magnitude of size of money that we had to take out of our pocket and invest. We needed to, and we are, we do gamble on the, um, the dollars per unit costs of energy that we're going to get our savings back. So I just want people to understand that if it's a small piece of equipment, we can pay for it out of our pocket. We are going to get energy savings, and we put those dollars back in. So I just felt that that needed to be clarified. Thank you. Energy expert. And last thing, I, too, want to see everyone at the football game on Friday night. Our kids are 2-0. I don't want to hear any complaints about parking. Get there early, park, walk down to the field, support the kids. I don't want to hear any complaints about parking. It is what it is. Show up, support the kids. Walking's good for And then the last thing before we end, on October 10th, we will not. I want everyone wearing purple. We should have definitely as a town support this. 
wearing purple on October. I have a purple tie, and I'll be wearing it. So that's what I have for purple, and I will be wearing it. And uh, so, again, we should be supporting the network against domestic, uh, domestic abuse. Great, great group. Thank you very much. And we move on to item number nine, town manager report. So I'm sure you have plenty to talk about. Well, you've covered a lot of it. Uh, I think the, the good news is not only about Honeywell, but about Novak and about a lot of the other projects, they're complicated issues. And, you know, a lot goes on to prepare them and get them to referendum or to get them concluded. And I think the important thing for us is to do what we did tonight, and we did it a, a month ago, is to have an adequate period of time uh, to discuss them and have people ask questions and follow up, because none of these programs are perfect. Um, I think that they do a lot of good, but they can always be tweaked. There's a lot of good questions that were asked on all of them. Uh, that's why we did NOVAC. We're following up with uh, a committee to implement uh, some of those things. I've talked to Jack about uh, his perspective, Public Works is looking at them as well. We, we accept all the input, and it's the same on Honeywell. I think it is a success. I mean, we had a target of about guaranteed savings the first year of 650000 and for reasons stated by our uh, uh, review person, there were about 710000 savings this year, because when they implemented the program, they actually were able to do more within the uh, budget. So that's good news. But we can always be tweaked, and as the mayor said, we're going to look at it again in May, follow it every six months, and then we'll have more data data uh, after the winter season to see how we're doing then. So I think it's important to implement them, to be positive about it, to ask questions, and then to review them and, and make improvements where we can. Likewise, on the sewer usage fee, that's a very complex area. Uh, I'm looking at it, it, it kind of, if you listen to Karen, and I've spoken to her a little bit, it sort of spins your mind, the different ideations of it. So I think, again, it was implemented with the best of intentions, and there are going to be some uh, uh, growing pains with it, some clarifications. That's why uh, I asked John to put on our website, try to clarify some of it because we were getting certain questions. And when I see a trend like that, we try to respond to it on the website. And likewise, with these most recent questions in regard to well use, we'll look at those and we'll get that information out. And I agree, with more meetings of WPCA, if there need, needs to be adjustments, we can do it. But it's all about listening and communicating. And I think about having the time to not rush during the budget or to try to do it during the regular meeting, and that's why I'll say to the folks at home that don't know, tonight we had a special meeting from 6 to 7. It was on the Honeywell report, and they gave a report uh, and a review of what they've done so far. All of this was implemented within 18 months by April, and now we have the data, and we'll continue to look at it. We'll also post that on the DPW website and on our website so people can look at it. But it's a good process. But I think uh, the good news is we, we had savings, 22% across the board, as some have pointed out um, that was joint between the town and the Board of Ed, but it's a good step. But we can always review and do better. But I think to have the time for the council and the public to be able to come and comment on this is very important, and that's why we're doing the meetings from 6 to 7, so we can give the uh, the respect and dignity to the issues so that we can really not just give them a, a gloss them over, but really get into the issues and then review them afterwards to make sure we're on track. Um, with the TIF, um, and that means tax incremental financing. It's a tool that the state has given municipalities. It used to be through the state, um, and their community development was very burdensome and onerous, and people didn't utilize it. And just for those in the area, it was used at the, in Windsor Locks. They were the first ones to implement it um, in the restoration and rehabilitation of the old Montgomery Ward area on the river. So we went and visited with that first selectman, made a report to Peter's subcommittee last week on it. Uh, he urged us and, again, echoed your a sentiment of the importance to get the TIF on the books, even though we might not have a project, let's be, as we say, shovel ready. So that's the next step. Our new development, our director of development services knows it's a priority. They've done the groundwork. It will be brought back. The next phase is to designate in town where you want to do it and draw those boundaries for the TIF districts. And we'll have more on that uh, at future meetings, but it is in the works. In regard to the opioid presentation, I concur with Peter and uh, uh, Bob and and Lori, it was it was amazing. It was terrifying. It was eye opening. I spoke to Mr. Dresick because the assistant superintendent was there. A lot has been going on this week, but again, urged them to consider bringing uh, the agent from the FBI or, or actually their consultant, their media person, into the schools. They've done it all around Connecticut, even in some schools with five fifth graders. So I think that it w it would really benefit the people to see this. It was a film that was done by the DEA and the FBI, and it was really really uh, informative and. 
I'll just say the speakers that they bring in are incredible. And uh, a couple of months ago, they did it on vaping. They had two psychiatrists, um, world experts on vaping, who came uh, from Yale to do a presentation. Unfortunately, neither the FBI nor Yale would let us film it and put it out um, on our, on our um, ETV, which is unfortunate. Um, but they have proprietary rights and other interests. But that was amazing. And I'll just say for the public, it's interesting that people think, well, the vaping is a safe alternative to smoking. Uh, it is not. And there was a report that came out today that that says two million, te you know, young people now are using vaping to smoke marijuana. So all of these things, um, you know, they may be billed and sold as as one uh, thing, but they turn out to be another. I'll just say I know that. Um, you know, we have strict laws in regard to advertising tobacco and doing advertising to protect our young people. Well, this is a loophole with vaping. And they gave us a statistic, maybe, I don't, don't quote me on the exact amount, but maybe four or five years ago they were spending nine or ten million dollars on advertising for vaping, and I think this year it was over two hundred million. So that tells you the profit that's involved. Um, I think other than the mowing, and we have gotten those requests in, and we try to um, deal with them quickly and expeditiously, and I think in a couple months I'll be wishing that you were calling me about mowing because I have a feeling it'll be about plowing. So I'd rather have the mowing requests as long as they last. And if there's any questions um, from the PAR report um, that we sent out, I'm available to answer any those Any questions too. for the town manager? Chris, I just got one question. Actually, it's you mentioned on ETV. Is it possible for us to actually look to have our to some of our small businesses in town just again starting there to actually low cost advertising on ETV? We're gonna have to look. There's some rules to it and policies okay. that we're getting, uh, and maybe you know some of it maybe just controlled by what our uh, town policy is, and we could adjust it. And I'm just gonna have to make sure there are no other. Um, right. uh, limitations just maybe we can just that. offer I mean to anyone I mean yep. I'm just saying I've heard from some small businesses saying you know how it's so expensive them to try to advertise you know on Cox Cable or whatever and we just well maybe when we do any TV you know reduce rate we get a little revenue but we also help our local businesses so just a, just a suggestion okay that's right. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 10. And we since the, oh, oops, sorry, go ahead, sir. Item 9. Important one, excuse me, with all of yours that you, you distracted me. Uh, I'd like to just give a brief report on the South River Street Bridge. We've been doing outreach. We've had meetings. We've had it on the website. And a resident today asked about, well, where are we? Because we had hoped that, that we would be doing the construction in the fall. Public Works, as you remember, they went out onto the state contract and solicited nine different um, approved contractors. Two actually submitted quotes. Um, they rejected one. The second one was was in line. They met with that contractor out at the bridge last Friday. He's going to tweak his quote a little bit. It's within the money that we allocated. I didn't want to put it on the website until I was sure. I'd really w rather wait till we issue the PO and we know. But if, if their uh, quote comes back and it's acceptable, then we would be in line to hopefully start um, the construction the beginning of October, and it would be completed within about three weeks. So keep your fingers crossed, but we'll put that on the website now. I didn't want to do it and have it fall through and have people disappointed, but after Friday's visit, it looks like it's very promising. That's great news. It's right, Chris. Well, if you put in a party, Paul, what about the, the Eversource uh, building on a river? Is that... Is that the what? The Eversource, the Eversource property, we've gotten a... Yeah, I mean, uh, disappointing. Still here for results? Well, disappointingly, we, the council, we were very um, proactive when we extended the time to have the contractor uh, go out there and finish the um, testing. Uh, we sent it, and our, our law firm that's handling it has made repeated uh, outreach to Eversource, and they haven't signed it yet um, to allow our contractor to go and complete it. So they were going to make further efforts and then I asked him if it's unsuccessful to let me know and perhaps the council or our representatives could reach out to them to urge them to do it because we did that quite a while ago and the results would have been in by now had they signed the agreement so I'm just going to say that publicly because it's a little frustrating and, and hopefully they'll hear this and they'll sign it and we can get the testing concluded it say we don't hear back from them by next meeting can we call them I'll into let you an know. executive session yep. yeah okay yep. Item number 10, town attorney report, since Maria is not here, assuming we have none. Okay. Item number 11, report of any special committees. Uh, Councilor Falk. Uh, development Services uh, subcommittee met last week, and um, uh, Lori Witten is on board with us now. She's been here about a month, so she's still getting her feet wet. But um, as, as Chris had implied, she is uh, well aware of the fact that the uh, TIF legislation is very important to us. 
and doing her best to move forward with that. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about zoning changes to support the TIF, and we also talked about um, uh, changing the blight legislation and also forming a board, a blight board, for reviewing uh, any instances that need it pertaining to blight. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, Bob, you want to say anything else in addition to what I said, or Lori? No, I think you, you hit upon you know all the, the important points, and uh, I, I would really think that the, the big point that we're really looking for is this blight commission to get act, you know started, and I think that's going to be key for us. Yeah. So, and because of the the fact that uh, she's getting on board and getting her feet well, we agreed to have uh, monthly meetings instead of quarterly meetings just to keep things moving along smoothly so she's she's not spending time on things that aren't important to us so hopefully that'll work out for us great thank you sir deputy mayor suzak last monday's facilities met had a special meeting they um had three um bids for the contract for the henry barnard um partial roof replacement we chose um eagle roofing as our contractor um that should be starting right believe now they are getting their building permit i hope we have a thursday meeting where we'll be updating as to the little fine uh, tuning of where we are but the roofing will be done on a saturday sunday schedule um they'll be have, running two crews it'll be 12 hours on saturday and 10 hours on sunday it'll lengthen the calendar time frame that they will need to do it in but it'll be done in a much more efficient um, and convenient for the schools and for the roofing company so we'll have weekends coming up and we'll be four days at the site over the october hopefully we'll be on site already and doing the roofing on those two and we've also asked for um, a review of the Eli Whitney roof because that's our next opportunity. And we'll be working on that in November because it's a six month time frame and we don't want to get in the situation we've gotten in where we have to ask for people to please review this, you know, expediently. Councilor Grisati. Yeah, the Commission on Aging, uh, just an update on the senior home repair. They've made uh, 87 visits to uh, residences and they have 87 completed jobs with only seven volunteers. So that uh, program needs to be uh, commended for their hard work. They've installed 34 air conditioners and now that the end of the season's coming up, we urge those people to make appointments to contact social services so that uh, we can get those air conditioners out for the people. So um, I just wanted to make that, uh, to make an appointment to get those uh, removal of the air conditioners. Also uh, for the fall, you know, the leaves for the gutter cleaning jobs. Uh, once again, that's gonna be a priority for this particular group. So just to make sure that you contact social services and Andrea will um, uh, you know, make the appointments and the, the group will go out there to do those particular jobs. Also, I just wanna mention uh, that there's a group for isolated senior group and they're actually doing a pilot program called Friendly Senior Caller Program, uh, which is gonna help identify uh, seniors that are isolated and they're going to be meeting uh, monthly at parkway pavilion and there's a group of people that are going to be uh, heading up spearheading that group and i think that's going to be important another is a support group for grandparents raising grandchildren and they meet uh every month and uh in triad on october 24th will be having their annual pancake breakfast and I'm happy to say that uh, monthly evacuation uh, drills are going to be uh, taking place. I know they had one last month. They're going to be have one coming up next month uh, at the senior center. So I think that's important also. Thank you. I just wanted to say that the subcommittee for public safety for the month of August was canceled, and we're going to be meeting on September 27th of this month. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Again, I know uh, this is this uh, is a lot of your personal times. So we appreciate everyone putting the effort into the subcommittees because <coughs> a lot of work's getting done, and as well as the staff as well. So again, we're getting a lot of uh, work done. 
Uh, moving on to item 12, old business. Items, appointments, town council. Items A, 1, 2, and 3 on page 1. I, we have none. For council appointments from items 4 through to 15, we have none. Is there a motion for item 16? Excuse me, for our, uh, joint facilities committee. Is there a motion to remove from the table? So a motion by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Falk. All those in favor of moving item 16, joint facilities from the table. All those opposed? Abstentions, eight in favor, zero against. I think the uh, actual replacement is listed wrong because we just replaced it this last meeting. So I don't think this, this yeah, is a Republican a appointment, yeah. just so everyone knows. So this is to, replace, uh, to appoint someone for the Joint Facilities Committee. Do we have a nomination? Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'd like to nominate Wendy Costa. Nomination of Wendy Costa. Do I have a second? Second. By Councillor Falk. Any other nominations? Do I have a motion for nominations to be closed? So moved. By Councillor Falk. Seconded by Councillor Sakala. All those in favor of closing nomination by a show of hands. Any opposed? Eight in favor, zero against. On the main motion to appoint Wendy Costa, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Wendy. Wendy Costa. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Wendy Costa. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Got eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. <laughs> we move on to page three of her council appointments. Items 17 through 20, we have none. We move to item B, which is town manager appointments. Uh, we, what I, um, number? Seven. So items one through six, no. Item seven, fair rent commission. That uh, from the homeowner's perspective, do we have a nomination, sir? Yes, uh, Dorian Owens. We have a nomination from the town manager of Miss Owens. I don't want to ruin her first name. Do we have to? We have to make a motion off the table. You, you can, Suzanne. I just want to make sure. No. We just. We just it needs to come off the table. Right, can I have a motion to remove item seven from the table. De council by uh, motion by Councillor Denny, seconded by Councillor Falk. All those in favor of moving item seven from the table, or show of hands. Those opposed, we have eight in favor, zero against. The manager has made a, a, a nomination of Mrs. Owens. Do we have any other nominations from the manager? No. All those, uh, all those in favor of closing nominations, show of hands. We have eight in favor, zero against. Now, in the main motion to appoint Mrs. Owens, any discussion? Dorian Owen. Sorry, I, again, I'm. I already ruined Annalisa's name tonight. So, <laughs> hearing no discussion other than me ruin her first name, um, <laughs> Suzanne, please roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Dorian Owens. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Dorian Owens. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. And items eight through ten, none for the town manager, no appointments. And on page four, items 11 through 15, again, no further town manager appointments. Item C, uh, again, the dissolving the NFL High Committee stays on the table. We move on to new business. We have none in consent. Item B, discussion resolution setting a public hearing to amend Enfield Town Code 38, Article V, Article 5, Section 38, 141 through 38-145 inclusive. So this needs to be moved to miscellaneous, correct? Oh, it's on new business. New business, okay. okay. So yeah. do I have a, a motion yeah. to <coughs> to discuss uh, to to discuss item B on new business? So moved by Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Crisati. All those in favor? Those opposed? We have eight in favor and zero against to discuss. Chris, do you want to give a little update on this resolution? Yes, this is a resolution to set a public hearing uh, to amend this ordinance. Uh, Sergeant Myers is here to answer any questions. Although it's just down to set the public hearing, he should perhaps come up and just give a Agreed. quick overview as to what it is. Then we're going to post it and have it available for people to be able to review it before, before the public hearing. Officer Meyer, please come forward. Appreciate it. Welcome, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Sergeant Meyer with the Traffic Division. Um, so the traffic division typically um, gets involved with enforcement for the this ordinance. Um, so a patrol officer will get sent down for the original call. They'll collect the basic information and they'll send it over to us. And we then 
know, monitor the property, get a compliance and whatnot. So we've seen some challenges in doing that with the enforcement end of things um, based on some definitions in the old ordinance and um, some recent Supreme Court decisions for towing vehicles and things like that. Um, so I've been working with the town attorney's office and um, making some changes, hopefully to try to get the ordinance, you know, where at least in my opinion, um, I'm able to enforce it a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we've, we've, I don't know if you want me to go over the changes or? Only if there's specific questions. I mean, we'll put it out there and you can review it for the next time for the public hearing. Um, they're tactical in nature, but it, it's to streamline it and make it more uh, easily understood and enforceable by the police. Again, the town attorney's office work with them. We got input from the blight people and other people uh, that are, you know, related to this. And I think that this is a product that Sergeant Myers is comfortable with and will pass muster in enforcement. Deputy Mayor Zuzak. It, will this like address the cars as we drive around that are parked, you know, sort of on the road strip, sort of in, in their yard, in their abandoned vehicles? They've been there for years. We're tired of looking at them. Well, so abandoned vehicles are actually covered under a separate statute. Um, okay. The old ordinance does list abandoned vehicles and unregistered vehicles, unsightly materials. Um, but Connecticut General Statute 14150 addresses abandoned vehicles. So. Regardless of if it's on somebody's property or in the road, if it's abandoned, um, the police department can tow it and take it into custody. Um, Just so we kind of get an idea, how, how I, I guess, how are these, these going to be taken care of? I have one that I go, I, two actually, I go by all the time. One's a truck and it's being placed on, you know, property, no home on the property. It's like advertising. It's not registered and it's been sitting there about a year and a half. Well, you can't see it right now, Donna. I, I, I know, <laughs> but you know fall will come, Ed, and I will see it again. Yeah, right. So there's a lot of challenges we have in enforcing some of the ordinances just based on um, search and seizure and, you know, different things like that and when we can enter property. And um, so I can't say for certain that these changes will solve everyone's problems, um, but I can tell you that, um, that I think this will solve the police department can address. Um, I mean, if if somebody has a vehicle that appears abandoned, but it's on their own property, we'd be hard pressed to say that's abandoned because it's their property and it's their vehicle. Um, it's just stored. Um, so the question would be, of course, if it's unsightly, which is of course subjective, um, it could fall under the the ordinance. Yeah. I appreciate that because you know we do get a lot of calls on these and I think you did a really good explanation of you know some of the limitations that you have and what you have to assess when you look at these. Thank you. Any other questions? Just is there a spot where we can put the change of the language and somewhere where folks can see it before the public hearing? Um, I know that there was a draft that included the copy I have the does language. just that. It has, language, yep. it has the new and then the lines is through. I mean, can yeah. we, is there a spot like we can say it's on our website so someone yeah. can read it? Just and they can I, compare it. Right, that's all I'm saying, right? Yes. Just for, for the public before the public hearing so they know if it's on wherever yep. so they can, when they come to the public hearing, they can ask the questions. Right. All right. And, and, and so, 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 that's, so that's the issue, right? So if, I, I mean, I, I hate doing ordinances that we can't enforce or anything. So today, if, if there's what will help, so if what will help in layman's terms, what we what we're limited to today by changing, what will allow us to do tomorrow? Well, some of the challenges I've seen was um, the definition for unregistered vehicles. Um, with the old definition for unregistered vehicles, um, it talks about if something to the effect of if the vehicle is required to be registered by the state of Connecticut, basically it should be. Um, the trouble is. No vehicles are required to be registered with the state of Connecticut if they're parked in your driveway. You could drive an unregistered vehicle around your house if you want, and the police right. aren't going to do anything about it. So just technicalities to change it so that should we ever get called into question down the road, that we are following proper procedures. And um, So that was one. Um, the other issue was, was towing. Um, right now the ordinance does call for towing. Um, but again, that's kind of an issue with the Fourth Amendment, whether the police department can go onto somebody's property to remove a vehicle right. without a search warrant and things like that. But so does this, this doesn't address your issue, right, where we have out-of-state registration? No. That, no. no, right? No, does not. Do okay. Just curious, okay. 
that's kind of cut and dry, but it's, right. that's, a, uh, that's a long process, and you have to prove that they're living there, and you have to watch when they get in the vehicle. And, because we've gotten meetings. questions on that from a lot. I know that's your big issue, and I know we've heard from residents on that as well. I don't know if that addressed it or not. Okay. Yeah. No, this is separate. No, that won't. So if so, if we have public hearings next meeting, and then it'll be moved to vote. Any? I hate that. Could we make sure? Could you make the next meeting too, just in case we have any questions? Make the next meeting. Um, just curious. I'm sure, we can work something out. Yeah. All right. Uh, just a suggestion, if you can. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Again, tonight's to set the public hearing for, for the public, and we will have it on our website for folks who are curious about the change. I know we've gotten questions from some folks in town. So, again, uh, uh, yeah, I'm assuming, Chris, by the end of the week, it'll be on a website? It'll be on tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be there tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. Any other discussion? Thank you, Sergeant. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Muller. Oh, I'm sorry. i got to read the I got to read the resolution. Here we go. This is a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, see, you weren't paying attention. <laughs> that was my fault, folks. Not a resolution. So again, uh, motion is to resolution setting a public hearing to amend Enfield Town Code 38, Article 5, Section 38-141 through 38-145 inclusive. Whereas town staff has recommended the above reference ordinance be amended, and whereas the recommended amendments have been submitted to the town council, now thor now therefore be it resolved the Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Chambers, Town Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, October 1st, 2018, at 6:50 p.m. to allow interested residents an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the amendment of Chapter 38, Article 5, Section 38-141 through Article 38-145, inclusive of the town code. So moved. By Councillor Falk, Second. seconded by Councillor Ungar. Any discussion on the motion? Sorry, Suzanne, hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Uh, new business item C, D, and E appointments. We have none, no other appointments. Now we move to item 14, which is items for discussion and items A, B, C, D, again, appointments and a consent agenda. We have none. So items E, F, and G have been moved to miscellaneous. And we move over to item 15, which is miscellaneous. And item E, uh, resolution accepting donation of equipment. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me get to that. Okay. Bless you. Whereas the Shaker Pines Fire Department has offered to donate a generator to the town of Enfield for use at Angela Lomondo Center, and whereas Connecticut General Statute 7 148 C 3A permits the town to accept gifts of personal property for municipal purposes, now th therefore be it resolved that the town council does accept the donation of generator, generator from the Shaker Pines Fire Department prepared on September 7th by the Department of Public Works. So moved. By Councillor Falk, okay. seconded by Councillor Denny. Just briefly, it's a generous offer, and they're, they're upgrading theirs. Uh, Angela LaMagna has a, a generator that offers limited power in outages. Public Works has looked at this uh, generator from Shaker Pines. It was well-maintained. It's in good order, and they think it would be appropriate for use at the LaMagna Center, so they've recommended that we accept it. Any just questions or discussion on it? Just a thank Council's you. Yep. Just a thank you to the Shaker Pines Fire Department. Well said. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? No? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Under miscellaneous item F, the resolution adopting a recreation manager job pos position. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the new job description for the position of Recreation Manager, submitted on September 7, 2018, by Steve Belinda, our, our Human Resource Director. So moved. By Councillor Falk, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Um, um, unless there's specific questions, this was part of the reorg. It's within the plan. It's within the budget. There was an old position abolished. This one replaces it. It was prepared by HR. Mary Keller is here to answer any questions, but it has been previously discussed. But she is available in case someone has a question. You want anything you want to highlight, or no? Since you've been patient. No. Well, I was going to suggest the 
public out there. They don't know. Maybe she could come up and tell them. Want to come up? Sure. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary Keller, Deputy Director of Recreation Services. When Recreation and the Senior Center merged with the Library Department, we reorganized the positions. Um, my position was the Recreation Supervisor. I oversaw Recreation. When we merged, I became the Deputy Director, and now I oversee Recreation and the Senior Center. So my position and what Allison Alberghini do, did as the assistant, sup, assistant recreation supervisor kind of merged. She took on some of my responsibilities, so we reorganized her job, and this is her new position. We did the same on the senior center side. Um, so you have a manager at the senior center, and you have a manager for recreation. Any questions for Mary? Yeah. So we have two supervisors reporting to you. Correct. Recreation and the Senior Center. Correct. Okay. I, I think we've addressed the Senior Center already. I think they hired somebody, right, to run the Senior Center? We have extended an offer and we're waiting for the oh, letter okay. to be returned. That it, There's been a verbal acceptance, but mm -hmm. we haven't received the letter yet. So when we do, we will yeah, make that announcement. And on the Recreation and you already have somebody there that was your yes, assistant. It's, it's it, yes, it's so. Allison and she is currently the Assistant Recreation Supervisor. Mm -hmm. She'll become the Rec okay. Manager. Good. Thank you. And she's very passionate about her job. Yes, she yes. is. She's very passionate. Any questions for Mary? Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Any other further questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzette. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Falk. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Uh, under miscellaneous item G, resolution app appointing acting town attorney, app uh, appointing acting town attorney for the town of Enfield, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby appoint Maria Elderson as the acting town attorney for the town of Enfield to take effect on se September 17th, 2018. Prepared on September 4th, 2018, by the town manager's office. By Councillor, motion by Councillor Muller, Second. seconded by Councillor Denny. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah, just, just. Councilor Deputy Mayor Suzak first. I just want to know if there's a time frame associated with that. Do do we have, like with the acting town manager, we had 90 days. Do we have any? No, there's no such prohibition right. in, in the charter. I just want to clarify that for right. everybody. And, and I can elaborate. Maria has been the assistant senior town attorney for 27 years. As you know, we've had a recent vacancy as for town attorney, so she will fulfill this. We are going out with an RFP. Uh, the council will be reviewing the final form and that will go out. So I imagine in short order we'll have a replacement and then this would expire upon the appointment of the permanent town attorney to fill out my term, which would have gone to through the end of December 2019. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other questions? Well, that was my question. He answered okay. it. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Muller. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Sakala. Yes. Four. Councillor Crisati. Four. Councillor Denny. Four. Councillor Fall. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. There's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Moving on to item 16, public communications. Does anyone like to speak for, uh, for the council? Charlie. And the time will be three minutes, sorry. Oh, I can do it in that, <laughs> believe me. Charles Woods, 11 Wesley Drive. Get a cup. Um, you've been referring to finding everything on the internet. When are we going to fix the internet? Man, I, I got on that internet and they got overlays over overlays. You can't read what's underneath. I mean, I had to really search to find out when tonight's meeting was. And I never saw what the subject was going to be. I never saw a copy of this so if you're referring to the internet you got to fix it first okay thank you thanks Charlie appreciate it anyone else I agree. Internet's terrible. anyone else like to speak for the council 
Hearing none, I declare public communications closed. We move on to item 17, Council Communications. Would any other council like to speak? Councilor Falk. On uh, October 13th, it's the uh, Jack O' Lantern Festival on the Green. Well, it's a fun event. They've had it for, I don't know, about 10, 12 years now. And it's uh, well received by the uh, uh, local schools. And they all compete with one another, carving up their pumpkins and what have you. It's a fun event. Also, um, the um, Outrun Addiction Group uh, is having a 5K run walk uh, event on Saturday, October 6th. That would be uh, starting like, uh, I, don't know, I, I don't have the date, the time, but it's uh, out of the Enfield Street School parking lot. And uh, the funds from that goes to, to Alex's Army. And I don't know if you've ever seen the trailer that they have. It, it's a... Uh, it's a bedroom scene. They towed it around, and it's called Hidden in Plain Sight. And inside that trailer, they have a bedroom arrangement with all sorts of knickknacks and trinkets and what have you. And, you know, it just looks like, like a normal bedroom, but when you start digging into it, you pick up a soda bottle, and the bottom screws out, and they put drugs in it. So it's pretty interesting to go through that. So that trailer goes around to different towns and different events. So. And it all takes money to do that, so the funds from this go to support that program. Anyway, it's Saturday, October 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Crisati? Okay, just two, two quick announcements. Just a reminder, September 29th is the Hall of Fame uh, dinner and recognition ceremony at Oak Ridge in Feeding Hills. Uh, and September 30th is the golf outing, uh, the Hall of Fame golf outing at Oak Ridge also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Councilor Muller. JFK girls soccer played today, played Manchester. They won 6-0. Nice. nice. So the, the high grass must have helped them if they were home. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the, the deduction? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Hearing none, item uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. By Councilor Falk. <laughs> Second by Councilor Daniel. All those in favor, by a show of hands. Those opposed, <laughs> eight in favor, zero against. Meeting's closed. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs>